Throughout history, it's fair to say that the battlefields have been dominated by men. You might say that most wars were fought entirely by men, or usually caused by them. But if we look at history, it's clear that women are no strangers to raising hell either. While celebrating the deeds of women in battle isn't necessarily the point of International Women's Day, talking about bloody wars and cold-hearted killers is what we love to do on this channel. And so without further ado, allow me to bring you five of the most badass women in history. Grace O'Malley A fiery red-haired vixen from Ireland, Grace O'Malley showed an appetite for adventure from a very young age, where she attempted to sail with her father. Her father though would deny her, claiming that her hair would get tangled in the ropes of the ship, and so in ultimate defiance, Grace O'Malley, still a very young girl, chopped off her hair and thus earned her passage aboard the ship. She would become the chieftain of the O'Malley clan, formerly run by her father, and would inherit all of his ships when she took over, so that she could use them for piracy. Given that pirating was mostly a male-dominated occupation, it's rather profound that Grace O'Malley sticks out for being a pirate in the way that she does. Her crews were fearless, and would board any of the vessels which Grace instructed, and she was not shy of robbing those who sailed too close to her. Those who resisted were swiftly killed by either herself or her men. She was said to be such an imposing, devilish figure, that just a day after giving birth to a child, she was stalking up and down the deck of the ship, scolding her men and barking orders. Her greatest showdown comes at a time when she met with Queen Elizabeth I, who threatened to end the pirates' operations in Ireland. The English Queen would capture Grace O'Malley's lands and some of her family members, which would prompt Grace to sell to England, where she stood eye to eye against the Queen herself. After some negotiation, Grace O'Malley managed to convince the Queen to return her lands and free her family members. Ultimately, Queen Elizabeth was not able to stop Grace O'Malley from pirating, even though she had her outnumbered and inside her own palace. For a more in-depth look at Grace O'Malley, be sure to check out my video on her in the description below. Lozen The Apache warrior was in her 30s when she and her brother Victorio were forced into San Carlos Reservation in Arizona in 1870. It was a place that was described as hell because of its horrible living conditions, but Lozen had no intention of staying here to die. She and her brother led a band of men out of the reservation, and together, they went on raiding parties, striking the fear of God into the would-be American settlers. Lozen was described as being able to ride, shoot and fight just as well as any other man. In fact, it's understood she had an uncanny ability to ride and shoot simultaneously, perhaps better than anyone else in the tribe. Her brother Victoria would one day quote that Lozen was his right hand, and as strong as any man but braver than most, and more cunning in strategy. He described her as a shield to her people. When Victoria was killed in battle, Lozen became fueled by revenge and traversed the lands of New Mexico, hunting down the settlers who had killed her brother. She would later join the legendary warrior Geronimo, where she would gain a reputation for being something of a seer, that when she reached out with her hands, she could see where the enemy were and how many units they had in their ranks. When Geronimo surrendered though, Lozen became ill with tuberculosis and soon died. Lagatha While many might recognise Lagatha from the popular show Vikings, you may not know that she's loosely based off a real historical figure, according to Danish legend that is. Lagatha was a shield maiden in what is now Norway, and began her career fighting for her dignity and the freedoms of her fellow women, after having been placed in a brothel for public humiliation after her Norwegian king Seward was slain by the Swedish king Fro. As the legend goes, her would-be husband Ragnar Lofbrok attacked king Fro, given that Seward happened to be his grandfather. However, the battle wouldn't have gone as smoothly if the women in the brothel including Lagatha hadn't gotten their hands on weapons. They dressed up in men's clothing, possibly having stolen the gear from men in the brothels, and headed out into the battlefield. Alongside Ragnar Lofbrok, Lagatha and her would-be shield maidens turned the tide of the battle and were able to defeat King Fro and the forces of Sweden. From that point on, Ragnar became fascinated by Lagatha, and the two would eventually marry after Lagatha realised she couldn't kill him, having already tried setting a bear and a hound to attack him. Ragnar eventually divorces Lagatha, 
because he cannot shake his annoyance that his wife had tried to have him killed. He remarries and moves to Denmark, where his people engage in a civil war. Realising he needs help, Ragnar calls for Lagatha, who had since fallen in love with Ragnar after having tried to kill him. She comes to his aid with 120 ships, and once more is able to tip the battle in his favour. Lagatha later remarries, but upon quarrelling with her husband, she kills him with a spearhead that she concealed in her gown. Saxon records conclude that she then usurped his entire name and sovereignty, and that she found it far more enjoyable to rule without a husband at all. For a more in-depth look at Lagatha, be sure to check out my video on her in the description below. Huinzingambande Huinzingambande was a highly intelligent and powerful 17th century ruler of the Ndongo and Mantamba kingdoms, which is now modern-day Angola. Around the turn of the 17th century, Nzinga fearlessly and cleverly fought for the freedom of her kingdom against the Portuguese, who were colonising the Central African coast at the time to control the slave trade. To build up her kingdom's military, Nzinga offered sanctuary to runaway slaves and Portuguese-trained African soldiers. She stirred up rebellion amongst the people still left in Ndongo, which had by then come under the rule of the Portuguese. Nzinga also formed an alliance with the Dutch against the Portuguese. However, their combined forces were not enough to drive the Portuguese out. After retreating to Mantamba again, Nzinga started to focus on developing the kingdom as a trading power and a gateway to the Central African interior. At the time of Nzinga's death in 1661, at the age of 81, Matamba had become a powerful kingdom that managed to resist Portuguese colonisation attempts for an extended period of time. Her kingdom was only integrated into Angola in the late 19th century. Boudicca As wife of the king of a Celtic tribe, Boudicca was a queen who would become a warrior. When her husband died, his will dictated that his kingdom was to be split between his daughters and the Roman Emperor. But the Romans did not recognise women as being eligible to inherit lands, so they assumed control of the entire kingdom themselves. When they met resistance, they began to torture those who stood against them, including Boudicca herself. They also tortured and raped her daughters. In 60 AD, Boudicca called upon her tribe to unite and push the Roman influence out of their land. With over 100,000 warriors at her command, they went to war against Rome and devastated the army of the Roman capital of Britain. She rode her troops up and down what is now modern-day London, slaughtering anywhere between 70 and 80,000 people. Her bloody exploits throughout London brought the Roman Emperor Nero to take note of her ferocity, and he soon began to ponder on whether he could afford to even stay in Britain, given the losses he'd sustained. But the Romans would soon counterattack against Boudicca, and her armies would soon be crushed by the Roman might. What became of her after this is unknown, but it is suspected that she'd either died from illness or suicide so as to avoid her fate at the hands of the Romans. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of the other great legends I've covered so far. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time, guys.